Hello, it's Shanna. I'm back and we're going to do something a little bit different today. Um, well, not really different, but different concept wise anyway. Um, I've been giving it a lot of thought as far as like what, what I guess groups of people tarot and oracle decks are geared towards. And obviously I think we all kind of know that a at least in the recent years, they've definitely been geared more towards women. Um, and I mean that in a way that I feel like if a deck was meant to be marketed towards a certain group, I feel like that's a group that has a high percentage rate of marketing. Um, also, I think younger people is definitely kind of a trend. Um, I think that there's I feel like there's a bit of an emergence of decks being geared. I don't even think that's a whole deck. I feel like you're, we're starting to see sprinkling of cards within decks that uh, represent older people. Um, but there's not really, in my opinion, any decks that are specifically geared towards sort of those middle years. And I mean that in like... So I'm 48 and while I'm still in the, you know, if we're going to go maiden mother crone, I'm still technically in the mother phase. Um, I still have one child at home. So again, you know, these parameters are very loose, but in my mind, that's kind of what, you know, how you would sort of categorize yourself is based on, is based on that. So for my mind where I am, Technically, I'm still pretty much in that mother phase, um, but I feel like it's, you know, kind of coming to a close. And I'm definitely, I, to me, a crone, the crone phase is like, you know, old and wrinkly and, and I don't mean, okay, let me make sure I say this correctly. A, I don't think crone is bad. Let's start with that. But for me, a crone is like a wise, older, someone who has kind of seen and done all of it. So for me, like 40s, 50s, 60s, even maybe like 70s, I feel like 70s is touching on the edge of that crone phase. So there's a lot of years in between the mother and the crone. And so I feel like does the mother carry through all of those years? I mean, I guess they can. And, you know, if you vibe with that, you know, those years in between to be mother, that, that I, I'm not here to like, uh, de I'm not here to define what those words mean. I'm just saying what I feel like they are. And the maiden mother crone, I don't really feel like I'm, I feel like once my last child moves out that I don't really feel like I fit into that mother box anymore. So I read somewhere or heard somewhere and I wish I could remember where, but someone said that there should be a fourth phase called the matriarch phase. And I thought that was brilliant because as someone who's coming to, you know, towards the end of that mother phase, I sort of feel a little bit lost if I'm being honest. Like I don't really know where I fit in. And I think that carries over in more than just motherhood. I think that carries over in like our work, our, you know, our careers. Um, like how do we dress? How do we act? You know, where do we go for entertainment? And I don't, you know, and all of those things, like you dress how you want and you go where you want. I understand that. I do. Um, and for the most part, I do. But also I feel like Generally speaking, I think most of us would be, okay, if I were to say that, I would not be being honest because for me, it's a struggle. So we'll keep this to a me statement, not a, an us statement. So I wanted to pull out some decks today that I felt like embodied that matriarch energy um, where it's not quite the mother anymore. You know, it's not... It's not like the Empress energy, right? 
but it's not really the crone energy either. It's just that little in-between phase that's sort of indefinable. So um, I have more Oracle than I do Tarot. So I thought, let's start with the Oracle first and see where that takes us. So, and I, I literally just walked into my, in my tarot, it's my guest bedroom, walked in there, grabbed a few boxes that I thought would contain cards that I felt had that energy. So I haven't flipped through any of these. So as we go, um, I might change my mind. So let's, let's start with this one. Um, the secret garden, enchanting messages from quiet spaces. I feel like this one embodies the matriarch energy. Because I have a lot of quiet time now. You know, I'm home by myself. Well, okay, I say I'm home by myself a lot, which literally I am not. I'm almost never home by myself, which I love. I feel like I need more time to uh, transition into that phase because I'm not quite ready to be home by myself all the time. But this, I don't know, it's just kind of a quiet energy where it's not really... Um, I feel like motherhood is busy and full of energy and action and teaching lessons and you know soccer practice piano lessons you know gymnastics all of those things and this to me is more like you know you no longer have to get up with the kids you know they probably don't want you to and if you are up they would prefer you didn't speak to them <laughs> if we're being honest um, so this is a, you know, get up in the morning, pour your cup of coffee, check your email, check your social media, and then sit down with a deck of cards that, I mean, like this, it just, it, it kind of a cozy, you know, self-reflective, introspective, that's what this deck is for me. Um, so yeah. Yeah. I think that this one embodies that in-between phase. I feel like a Chrome deck would be more um, in depth where this one feels, um, this one feels more lighthearted without being sweet and cute and funny, you know? So that's the secret garden oracle. And get this open. This is by Rockpool. Let's see if I can stack those without tipping them over. This one is the Home Oracle deck. This one I got a, a few years ago off of Etsy. I I know that they go in and out of uh, print. Um, I haven't seen it in a while. But I know they, you know, they have other decks. They actually just came out with another one under a different name that was very similar to this, like very similar. Um, as usual, I will link everything below. If I can't find what, you know, if I can't find the link, I'll at least uh, try to link the Etsy shop so that you can follow them and keep an eye out for what they're, what they offer. So again, I feel like this is a deck that, rather than teaches us how to teach others, such as children. It teaches us to be us, our true authentic self. Um, at least for me, you know, I had kids young and I don't want to say that I didn't have a chance to find out who I was because I really, I do, I feel like I, I feel like that was my 30s for me. I really feel like I kind of discovered who I was. But, not to sound cliche, but the older I get, I mean, the more I change and the more I'm starting to kind of want to almost allow myself to be who I want to become, I guess. I guess that's a good way to put it. Um, oops, I'm sort of flipping through this really fast. Um, because I sort of feel like I don't really know who I want to be for the rest of my life. I mean, I probably got, 
hopefully not quite 50 years, but a ways to go still. So, you know, authenticity, faith. I think this deck is nice to sink into um, and just, it's a good deck for journaling. And I think it's helped me start to define those blurry edges that I feel like my 30s really solidified but are sort of starting to dissipate a little bit. And I kind of want to come back into who I feel like I want to become. So, like, who do I want to be when I grow up, right? This is, this is, I really like this one. It's got a nice card stock. It's pretty. It is a little, it falls a little bit, um, fallish in the colors for me. So I don't pull it out often. Um, maybe late summer. So it feels a little seasonal for me, but I do enjoy using it when I do pull it out. The guidebook is okay. It's pretty basic. Um, it does have a second language. I'm not sure what that language is. I want to say Ukrainian, but I don't know that for sure. So, but yeah, it's pretty well written um, for being, I, I'm assuming, a second language. But yeah, that's that. Um, and this deck apparently, let's see if I can remember. This was created by, I want to say it's like some kind of therapist. This person was a therapist of of some kind, but I don't remember what. Anyway, I don't remember. The box is a little weird, but, you know, it works. I don't know which way it goes in, so we're just going to pretend. So, yeah, that is the Home Oracle. Next up, we have Oracle of Echoes. <clears throat> this is one of those decks. I, When I first saw it, I freaked out and I was like, oh my gosh, I have to have that deck. And then I quickly realized that it was out of print and almost spent a lot of money buying it secondhand from someone who was selling them. Um, and thankfully someone else, you know, mentioned in one of the comments that, you know, I had posted Hey, this, you know, Anatorian, she reprints these pretty regularly a couple times a year. So I was grateful for that person. Saved me quite a lot of money and I was able to get one of the the reprints. So this is the second edition. Um <clears throat> kind of, you know, it goes along the same lines. This one just feels a little bit it goes beyond motherhood. It doesn't feel quite as young as a lot of decks can. And I think it covers, I think the keywords are really, really good. Not to sound trite. Um, I think they cover a lot of things that I'm, I feel like I'm going through right now. You know, it gives me permission for a lot of things. A lot of emotions that I feel like I'm going through, a lot of changes that I feel like I'm going through, and I think it sort of um, grounds me and validates those things, which I really appreciate. I think validation is a big part of a lot of these decks, you know, feeling like it understands what I'm going through in this moment of my life. So... Oh, look, it's a title card. Yeah, honestly, I just, you know, and this one pairs well with a lot of things. There's a lot, you know, the color palette is easy to pair, in my opinion. And so we have the crone, and I definitely, you know, I don't look like that yet. So... I don't mind that it's in the deck. I just, as a whole, I think this deck more embodies the matriarch than it does the crone. So, all right, 
Next up, we have the Wisdom for Healing cards. I'm going to take a sip of drink. This one, uh, my daughter actually found for me at a secondhand store. It was really sweet. She texted me and I was at work and she was like, hey, I saw this deck. Do you want it? Um, and I was like, yes, please. This is very... I'll look at the book and see when it when it was published. It feels very dated, I'll be honest. It's very um, early 90s. But so, you know, I have a couple of these decks with this kind of vibe. And I guess it doesn't have a book because it has the stuff on the back. So I don't know. I don't know when it was published. It does not say. But it doesn't matter. I love it and I do. I feel like it embodies that matriarch energy. Um... You know, this is this feels like one of those decks that is sitting in a therapist's office. Um, some might call it generic, but for me, you know, this is one that I have. I have an altar set up in my closet. I call it my morning altar. Um, I have a sunstone on it, and then I cleared out one of my... I have two dressers in my closet. One of them just has really small drawers, so I cleared out one of those small drawers, and put in, I think I've got like six or seven different Oracle decks in there. And this is one of them, um, that I just, you know, I pull out in the morning and I'll just do a reading like before I shower or, you know, after I've dressed before I head downstairs for the morning. And I just really like it. It's soothing. It's, it's like talking to a friend and who just, you know, just has really nice things to say. It's just one of those friends that makes you feel good. Like you just, they're the ones you want to go to when you're feeling frustrated or sad because they're not the, you know, they're not the, uh, give it to me like it is friend, but they're not the tell me I don't look fat in that dress friend either. Like it's just the friend that's like, I mean, I wouldn't wear that dress, but if you like it, you should wear it. <laughs> that friend, that's what this deck feels like. And I mean, you know, I mean, some of these images are a little bit younger. Like, she seems a little younger, but, like, some of them definitely could, you know, to me at least, they feel like they could represent someone just a little bit older. And I appreciate that. Now, some of these do have God in it. For some people, that is great. For me, um... I guess it, I guess it would depend on what I was asking if I were to pull this card... I might, I might pull a different card. Um, but you know, in that moment, if, if I'm vibing with it and because it doesn't necessarily have to be a specific God of a specific religion or belief, right? So whomever pulls this card can say, you know, it can be who, whatever God that they want to have in that moment. Does that make sense? Yeah. Generally, I will say generally, I won't go for decks um, that have God-related things because it's not something that resonates with me. But I'm also not offended by it if it's in a deck that I, I like otherwise. So, I love this one. This card is so good. I mean, my, you know, my two oldest kids, they've already moved out. They've married. My youngest is 19, going to college. I imagine he'll be home for a couple more years, maybe. So this, you know, this feels very exactly what I'm talking about. Like they're still here and obviously I'm still a mother, but yeah. I mean this, okay, like be open to spiritual guidance. Like if I'm going to ask a question and I pull this card, again, depending on what my question is and where I am, you know, emotionally, I suppose that day, I might just, just roll with it and be like, okay, you know, like I will say, um, that's something that tarot has not just tarot, but my witchcraft practiced witchcraft practice as a whole has allowed me to better understand where my husband comes from when he talks about believing in God. Because I understand, I guess I just understand better than I used to. So I can, you know, sometimes I kind of appreciate this. Like, okay, well, 
I don't have to believe in X, Y, or Z, you know, it can fit into how I need it to fit. It can fit where I need it to fit. Does that make sense? So, oh good, there's a second one. How did I not know that there were this many cards in here? It's okay. Let's see what it says. Okay, so obviously I don't use this deck a ton because I wasn't aware that these were in here. Um, so let's see how I would... I mean, I think I would probably go ahead and just replace the word God with spirit in these instances. Um, this one's a little extra for me, you know, the sacred chapel, heaven, that, that's a little extra. I might actually tuck that in the bottom of the box and just tip it upside down so that it doesn't come out next time. But overall, I do very much enjoy this deck. I mean, there's some really good messages, right? Like these, this is a good message for anybody, but I feel like too, when you start to get a little older, things start changing a little bit, it gets even more important to pay attention to the physical realities of our bodies. So yeah, I just really like it. And I don't really like clowns, but uh, I don't mind that. Especially when, you know, sometimes you pull that, you pull a card and it's just like, you kind of dislike the card, but it fits the moment so well that you just go with it. So that's what this is for me. That is Wisdom for Healing cards. Next we have Goddess Love Oracle. Oh, I did have the other one. I think it was called Goddess Dream Oracle. And I liked some of the cards in that, but a lot of them I just didn't at all. So I just, I wound up rehoming that one, but I really, really like this one. It's very pretty. It feels like um, a little bit seasonal, like all the seasons, it's got spring, summer, fall, winter, whatever. But, you know, again, this is another one that I have in my, my drawer, in my closet. I do like the guidebook. It's really nice to read. And I just think the images are so sweet, comforting. It just feels, again, you know, you're going to have some younger images, but overall the vibe of the deck to me feels very matriarch. Like, you know, this is, this feels like me, you know, like I'm at home, nobody at home. I've just got my cat who really wants me to hold him a lot. So, yeah, I don't know. That's the vibe of this deck for me. So, yeah. Sorry, some of these I'm just tearing through and others I'm taking more time, but that's okay. That's why we're here, right? Goddess love. This is the last oracle. So this is the Wild and Sacred Feminine deck. Um, I've gone back and forth on this one. And Annette over at Project Refined Life recently posted a video where she paired this deck with a tarot. Which in this moment, I cannot remember what it is, but it's the reason I pulled it out of, the, out of my purgatory drawer. Um, so this one still, this one has gone back into my bedroom drawer. Um, my closet drawer. So this one's sticking around for a little while longer. It definitely has, to me, that matriarch uh, energy. I mean, for so many reasons, right? It's, it's a good deck and it's beautiful and I really liked the original of this deck. It was called something else, I can't remember what. The artwork was slightly different, but for the most part, this is what it was. Um, and I think I would probably regret getting rid of this one. So I hold on to it and I really like the backs. They're really pretty. 
I don't use this one a ton. Um, this artwork, this style of artwork, just really falls a little flat for me most of the time. But the images and the concept and the keywords of this deck are really, really nice. So I hold on to it for that. Anyway, I think we've all seen this one a bunch. It's pretty popular on YouTube. But I think it very much embodies that matriarch. I mean, they you know, she, they say crone in this. To me, other than the gray hair, she's maybe not even necessarily a crone yet. But overall, this is less, I was just going to say, this is less mother energy and more matriarch as I pull up the nursing mother but yeah okay I have three tarot decks and one of them I'm not sure on so when we get to it we can discuss alright I'm getting another drink hold on please okay the Chrysalis Tarot. Um, okay, um, if the camera looks different, it's because it is now 45 minutes later. Um, my son just came home early from school and it was a whole thing and I bumped the camera and he made lunch and now I'm back. So anyway, the Chrysalis Tarot. Um, I don't even know if I've already said anything about it. So we'll just it out and take a look. Now at first glance, at least to me, this does not look like a matriarch deck. Um, a lot of the figures are younger, but I feel like the um, the theme of this deck feels very matriarch to me. Um, I did buy separately the full-size guidebook that I have not yet read. I think it's the um, the aesthetic of it, kind of. It reminds me a little bit of, I don't know, like the 80s, maybe? Like 80s old lady, dare I say? And I don't mean that in like a mean way, but uh, it's just, I don't know, it just feels very post-motherhood pre-crone energy. Like kind of that um, playful like a fairy tale for a grown-up. That's kind of what this feels like to me. And I very much appreciate that. just um, I don't really have a lot to say about it I haven't worked with it a ton I have used it a few times and have gotten really good readings with it it's not a deck that I thought I would ever really vibe with but you know as as it happens I just I don't know I felt pulled to it so I bought it and I really m very much enjoy it it just feels um I don't really know what the word is that I'm looking for Kind of like like I don't know a sweet and cheesy witchy deck that feels like that in between phase that I feel like I'm in so yeah very nondescript on that one but that's how it feels so we're gonna go with it also my train of thought obviously has been derailed I actually don't hate tuck boxes until it's time to put the cards away okay chrysalis tarot 
All right, we have two more. This is the one that I wasn't sure how I felt about it because it definitely has that younger female presence. Um, but also, like this, oh, this feels very Alanis Morissette to me. I don't know why. Um, but it also sort of embodies that Again, that in-between phase of past motherhood, not yet crone. And I feel like, you know, I have, gosh, like even 20, 30 years ago, this would not have felt matriarch to me. But anymore, like, you know, women are not aging the same way they used to, in my opinion. You know, we're wearing our hair long, longer. We're still dressing. Like the clothes I think that we choose are still relevant in fashion and and that's not true for everyone. Not that it needs to be, but I would say as a whole, we look younger now as 30, 40, 50 year olds than we ever did in the past. I don't know if you've ever seen those memes where it shows um, like the golden girls who were like in their 40s and their 50s and they, they look like they're in their 60s you know, and if you put long hair on them, they look a lot younger. So not this not that this is all about long hair, but I feel like this could fit that in between phase. And it's very witchy, which I appreciate. Especially when I need to feel that energy. So I don't know, what do you think? Does this feel whatever stage you are in, does this feel like something that could be something beyond, you know, a young woman or a mother stage. Just curious. Okay, that is the Witch's Tarot. I've got one more. And that is, in case you haven't guessed, the Herb Crafters. I think the other one of this creator that would have also fit into this category um, is the Gaian Tarot. I just cannot get behind the faces in that deck. They just weird me out too much. But this one's very much a May, no, this is a June deck for me. Um, but it has, you know, it has the hands, it has kind of that vibe of like, I want to say like grandma's kitchen, but not quite. You know, it doesn't quite have that, doesn't quite have that aesthetic. This to me is very matriarch deck, matriarchal deck. So, it's funny, I had this deck when I first got back into tarot and promptly rehomed it because it had the, you know, the other suit names and it just, I had no idea what I was doing. But once I learned tarot, I quickly brought it back into my collection, and this is a lifer for sure. So funny, I um, I heard Logan over at Larkin Legend use the term lifer, and it made me laugh because I've used that term as well. I'm sure a bunch of us have, but um, I, I started thinking I was like, maybe I should do like a lifer tag, you know, like lifer tarot deck or lifer decks. But I quickly realized that the 10 forever decks essentially was that. So it's been done, but that's okay. Maybe I'll do that tag at some point. This deck feels very cozy to me. It feels comfort comfortable and comforting at the same time. Um, if I need to feel the energy of like sitting down with someone who's my age, who's been through what I've been through, who, you know, has also has grown children, um, who maybe was a stay-at-home mom for a long time. It just, it has that energy and it feels like it speaks my language. So I appreciate that. We're going to listen to my dryer, as is the usual. Anyway, that is all of my decks. Um, 
that I feel like fit the matriarchal vibe. And I really don't have anything else wise or insightful to say. So thank you again for joining me, for sitting here and watching through this with me. And uh, yeah, that's it. I guess I will see you guys next week. Be sure to subscribe as one says, and catch up with me on Instagram. I post on there a little more frequently than once a week um, than I do here. And cool. Anyway, I'll talk to you guys next week. Bye.